Hi, this is Brother Richard. <coughs> and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. This will be part 315. <coughs> and the title of our lesson today is Those Call to the Gathering. Now we want to focus on the gathering. <coughs> because the gathering has all the aspects of the other comings of the Lord. There's the aspects of the rapture, the aspects of the judgment, the aspects of the reward system. So we're going to start with Matthew 24, verses 36 to 47. Because this is a passage of scripture that people believe and teach is the rapture. Matthew 24, 36 to 47. We're going to read the whole context and then we are going to investigate its principles. <clears throat> okay. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So he's talking about a day that he's going to come. For as in the days of Noah, <coughs> so shall also coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. They knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, the other left. Two shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. For know this, that if the good men of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. <clears throat> now, breaking this down, we find principle. The gathering is divided into two phases. <clears throat> One phase deals with the body being gathered in general, and the other phase deals with those who are going to be authorities over the church being gathered. Now, <clears throat> We want to take a look at scripture that illustrates what we're reading. Turn to Jeremiah. I mean, not Jeremiah. Turn to Psalms 50. Psalms 50. Verses 4 to 5. <clears throat> <clears throat> he shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he may judge his people. So the people of earth are going to be judged. <clears throat> but not judged in the sense of condemnation, but judged for positions. Is that what you're calling the general gathering? Okay. This is the gathering of the rulers, the authorities. Verse 5, let you know that. Gather my saints together unto me, those, those 
that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. I just want to clarify the gathered in general and gathered those who will be rulers. We're going to, focusing on the ones that are going to be the rulers first. Okay, okay. So you did the other way around. You see, this is why you're confusing. <laughs> <laughs> but <clears throat> we're looking at at both at context. Okay. <clears throat> because that only those are the only ones that are talked about here in, sure. in Matthew 34. Now notice what he says. Verse 40. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken, the other left. Two shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken, the other left. What did you just read? Matthew 24. Thank you. Matthew 24, 40, 41. People read this in context that they think it's the rapture. Right. It's the gathering. He's spoken, gather to me those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So that means it's exclusive. Well, this is what you have in this exclusivity. 2, verse 40, shall be in the field, one shall be taken, the other left. Two shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, the other left. The one that's taken is the one that qualifies and has made a covenant with the Lord by sacrifice. Now it's further illustrated in Luke, the 17th chapter, verse 34 to 37. <coughs> Luke 17, 34 to 37. <clears throat> I tell you... Okay. Sorry. That's all right. Okay. I tell you in that night, there shall be two in one bed. The one shall be taken, the other shall be left. Two shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken, the other left. So he's talking about the same thing that's being referred to in Matthew 24. <clears throat> Verse 37, They answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Whithersoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. Now what is he referring to? Whithersoever the body, the word body there comes from a Greek term, soma. It's referring to the body of Christ. He's saying, wherever the body of Christ is, thither will the eagles. Now, <clears throat> the word eagle there, aetos, means noble bird, bird of distinction. So he's talking about the nobles are going to be gathered to the body they're the superiors, they're the rulers, they're the authorities. You have two distinct gathering <coughs> phases, if you will. One for the body in general, and one for the leadership. Okay. Turn to Jeremiah. You could, you could say that uh, the use of the representation of cedars is similar in this. Yes, it's representing Jeremiah 23rd chapter. Jeremiah what? Jeremiah 23. Okay. 
And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries whither I have driven them and I will bring them again to their foes. He's talking about a gathering of the body, the soma, as a whole. <coughs> Where are they gathered? They're gathered to the communities that will constitute the churches of Revelation. <coughs> Why is he using uh, remnant? Because the whole body is not going to make it. With the judgment, Christians are wiped out. Christians are left behind in the sense of not being counted worthy to be part of the gathering to the communities. Those that are, are going to be gathered there to await the rulers. Those that will ultimately oversee them. The rulers are two. The angels in the heavens the apostles and prophets on the earth. Now, what he says in the second verse, verse 4, and, 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 I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. So you get the judgment, you get this collapse, you get a time between the judgment and his coming for the gathering. You get the gathering in which the body is taken to the communities. The leaders are taken to the communities after, after they receive their inheritance. <clears throat> the, only the leadership is going to be given its inheritance because you're the body body hasn't qualified yet question the shepherds you the shepherds the are teachers the teachers, the teachers or the elders no the teachers the elders are the students okay. it's the elders that are gathered into oh, so the at this point they haven't actually got into the communities yet. no yeah okay, so, okay. Yeah. The gathering is a, it's, it's a sovereign move of the Lord right. at a specific time, creating the conditions for what you see in the book of Revelation. Turn to Ephesians, first chapter. The gathering <coughs> is uh, so extensive and <coughs> so preeminent that it, it has equality and maybe even supremacy over <coughs> the rapture. Because the rapture is shorter. The rapture takes place as a culmination of things that have taken place before that. But the gathering is multifaceted. It sounds like you're describing now the rapture to be the confirmation of the gathering. Yes. Which is why you've just it's said It's like a conclusion said. of events starting with the gathering. Now, Ephesians, first chapter, verse 9. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times. So the rapture, take, I mean the uh, gathering takes place after events have preceded it. And it constitutes a climax setting the stage for some radically different events to take place. <clears throat> Note what he goes on to say. 
the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. It connects the heavens and the earth. It connects the culmination of the things happening in the churches. It divides the leadership, which becomes a new leadership. Everything is radically changed and made to culminate in the gathering. Note what he goes on to say. In whom also we, we, so he includes himself here, have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. <coughs> Those, <coughs> the reason that you have the gathering of the body in, 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 one, in one phase, the leadership in another phase, is because the leadership is going to be taken to receive its authority to lead. And then it's going to be transported to the communities in which the authority is set up. So the gathering is extensive, all-encompassing. It includes things in the heavens, things on the earth that are unprecedented, haven't taken place before. It includes the onset of a new reality. It includes events for the first time that constitute eternal things on the earth. You get your reward, you get your, uh, your, your position, that's an eternal event. <clears throat> At that point, everything commences into a new process, if you will. <clears throat> so the angels at the point that they've been elevated receive their inheritance and are instructing from I presume it would be the heaven of heavens <clears throat> are also instructing those in the other dimensions that make up the earth matrix mm. everything mm. everything now at that point what understanding do those intelligent those intelligences who are in the other dimensions that make up the earth matrix have of the mysteries of the kingdom of God very little <coughs> very little or none well they have some because um, <coughs> you've heard the gospel go forth which mm. everybody's heard you've heard a preliminary uh, procedure of things they've seen the judgment pronunciation of things that have happened <clears throat> but just like those on the earth, their knowledge is very small. The only ones that have the whole package are the teachers. Great. But those who are comforted in neither parts of the earth, I can't remember, Isaiah somewhere. 15, Ezekiel. Ezekiel, 28, okay. Those who are comforted in the neither parts of the earth, prior to the elevation of the Prototokos teacher, who's just received his uh, inheritance, the day before that, what understanding did that righteous being have who's been taken from the heavens, kept in the paradise regions? What understanding did he have at all? <clears throat> little. All little they know is none? little. Okay. Just like the creation. The creation has a certain okay. understanding, okay. but it's little. All right. Okay. He was speaking about the other dimensions and, and the other beings in there. Are there going to be beings from other dimensions being included into the gathering as teachers? No, because the teachers are solely from Earth, yeah. from the human race. And predestinated. Nobody else could qualify to be a right. teacher. Right. But the thing of it is, is, so we're going to be, I'm assuming we make it, we're going to be teaching these to be able to make the rapture, but they're not human. <clears throat> no, you're going to be teaching them the things of God that pertain to them. Uh, go back to Matthew 24. We're going to try to put this together as best we can. Time we have. I'm covering this again. Starting in verse 36. Twenty-four, starting verse thirty-six. But of that day and hour, knoweth no man, 
No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. So that addresses your question. What do they know? Nothing. Nothing, sure. <coughs> In fact, you could even say they know less than the angels. Sure. There is a day which constitutes the fullness of times in which this is going to commence. Since Gabriel and Michael have been taught prior to this point, why have those two not taught these here referred to? Because in said? this reality, they haven't. Just that they haven't. They haven't. Right. There's nobody in to words, teach them. They, in, in other words, they haven't. Hang on a second. They haven't been authorized to do so. They have nobody to teach them. They had someone to teach them in the past. No. In Daniel's time. No. No. That's a different reality. Oh. There's no Adam in heaven to teach them. Okay. You're still here. Okay. 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 Question? Interesting. We're developing these uh, these races, if you will, nations. Yes. Okay. Yes. The humans are the ones that are being prepared to make the rapture. Yes. What are they being prepared for? Just to fill the, the new kingdom? No, 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 no. God created them for specific, unique purposes. Satan wiped everything out. They have to be retaught, retrained for their initial dis distinct purpose. So they're the creature, they're the creation in other words, yeah. at that point. Yes. Each one is the unique. You had a million different life forms sure. that have been designed for a million different purposes by the Father. You're going to be the one to install and put them back on the track where they're supposed to go. Give them the understanding of what, the, just like on the, hum, the human race, is totally lost. Well, the prototokist teachers are there to put everybody back on track who is willing to understand and receive. Is it going to be just be instruction, no question and answer time? It's not. <laughs> they're just going to receive what they're, what they're told. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be funny. Go on. Question and answer are from a linear perspective. Okay. You instruct them from their spiritual makeup. You impart to them identity, purpose, from a divine perspective. Because they have never had instruction correctly. Sure. Have they been instructed incorrectly? Sure. Okay, so, so that's, that's if you're an influence. It. But it's not that's teaching the way it is here. The human race has been deviated because of a spiritual influence that made the mind corrupted and wiped it out, wiped its purpose. Man is an amnesia. He doesn't know what he was put here for, where he's going, who he is. It's the same for them. When you enter into your calling and you've qualified, you're going to connect and correct that being's purpose from a divine perspective. That question and answer is purely because of the corruption. Yes. The questioning is to overcome the corruption. If, if in this instance, someone, uh, an intelligence was receiving from an, an elevated teacher, mm -hmm. that being in a dimension, which would be a paradise from our perspective, would just be received. There'd be nothing you know, coming against him to receive. Certainly. So the whole purpose of this, he's talking about, the whole purpose of the question and answer is to overcome the human corruption so that we can actually understand what's being said. Luciferian corruption. Okay, the Luciferian corruption. Humans have got a little bit to do with this as well, but yeah, okay. Well, he corrupts in different ways. Sure. If you're on Sesti's Omicron 3 and okay. there's life forms there, he's not corrupting you the same way he's doing a right. human on Earth. Right, right. That's a great point. In that respect, what you're going to do, remember the whole creation is waiting for what? The manifestation of the that sons of God. To liberate them. I'm sorry I'm going to ask this, but I, it just shoots through my mind. What have, have these other beings, the non-humans, done to, to, to be qualified to be part of the gathering? It didn't side with Satan. <laughs> What's that? It yeah. didn't side with Lucifer. They were righteous. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. That's it. <laughs> Very good, sir. Yeah, you add it's to the it. only answer. There's, there's no other answer. Yeah, that's, it. that's it. But let's go on yes. here. Of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. So there's one day, just like there's one day where the judgment is going to take place, there's one day <coughs> when the gathering is going to take place. 
Drop down. Verse 40. Then, then, then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken, the other left. Two shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, the other left. So the gathering is going to happen suddenly. And only that individual who's qualified by sacrifice, and this is talking about the leadership, is going to be taken to the presence of the Lord, the Bema seat. He's Amen. descended from heaven. <clears throat> he set up his court. He's spoken. By the time he, he arrives, they've all been gathered. They're going to receive their inheritance. At the same time, the body itself is being gathered to the community to receive uh, preparation for the leadership. At the same time, verse 47, Verily I say unto you, he shall make him ruler over all his goods. So you're going to be gathered. You're going to stand there and receive your inheritance. And bang, you're entering into your position of authority in the heaven. All this is taking place simultaneously. This is the way the Father operates. So we have to be ready. That's why he's warning over and over and over again. Be ready. Be ready. Because in the day that you don't think it's going to happen, sure. it's happening. You're going to be part of it. There's no indication of a number of individuals, Mr. Jones, but if we have life forms that did not side with Lucifer, how many could there be? Is there, can I count them? Quite a few. Exactly. Quite a few. So this is a massive thing. Yes. Yes. That's why I say this, this transcends comprehension. It stands on a part of the second coming and it even transcends the rapture because it is so all-inclusive and there are so many individuals involved in it. <clears throat> but we will, of course, we haven't even scratched the surface, we will continue. The beauty of this is we have an opportunity to partake of it. This is our door opening here for us to take note. Where do I want to, where do I want to position myself in this? Am I going to apply myself? Is this important enough to me? Do I want a piece of this? Um, Georgia asked about the bride. You have an opportunity here to, be the to become part of that group that you were asking about. Mariko, Marty, you have an opportunity here. Position yourself to be part of God's master plan Chris, brace, opportunity here. The decision is all yours. What you do with this, you can run with it, or you can lay it aside. It's all up to you. Okay, <clears throat> talking about the bride and the wedding supper. Revelation 19. <clears throat> if you start in verse 1, <clears throat> says after these things I heard a great voice after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying hallelujah salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord <clears throat> our God and it goes on to say Verse 6, I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. So this is the voice of all the martyrs that came out of the tribulation period. This is the voice of the elders, the angels, everybody around the throne. <clears throat> is this a unified voice? Yes. 
are they unified only for this event? Well, uh, in, in this, yes, in this particular context, okay. they're focusing on one thing, okay. and that is the bride. And it says, verse 7, <clears throat> let us, let us. So the us refers to all these people, but they are not the bride. They're focusing on the bride. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. <coughs> and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. So the bride are saints. The saints that come out of the groups that made the rapture. There are elders, there are angels, these are those that have qualified to be the bride and the guide at the last, <coughs> uh, uh, at the, the last part of the wedding takes them from all the other groups and arrays them in this robe befitting the bridegroom and then the wedding takes place. The wedding is a union of the bride and the bridegroom. And they become one. So the bride comes out of those that make the rapture and qualify to be the bride. What are the qualification criteria? Making yourself ready. Okay. Explain that, please. <clears throat> it says that the bride hath made herself ready. Okay. When did she make herself ready? She made herself ready by her life on earth. She determined she wanted to be the bride of the bridegroom. <clears throat> she lived a life that qualified her to be a bride of the bridegroom. And she becomes a bride <clears throat> just before the return of Christ. And she is put in union with the bridegroom. Uh, turn to Matthew 25. 25, verse 1. It says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. Ten virgins. What are virgins? They're pure. There's no blemish whatsoever in them. Ten virgins which took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. <coughs> so on earth, they have determined they want to be the bride of the bridegroom. And they're living their life for that one purpose. Union with the bridegroom. Only half of them make it. But the principle is here. They're preparing themselves for the bride position by the life they live. Is it true to say that those who become pillar angels also think at the time they're on the earth that they wish to be the bride? Yes. Whether they're elders or whether they're angels, they have the one desire. They love him so much, right. they want to be unified with him <coughs> as his consort as his bride. They want to serve him, love him, live for him in this such a devotion as a wife is devoted to her husband. So the qualification therefore is making the decision to be the bride, giving up your life completely so that you can be the bride. Yep. And being Matthew 25 verse 1, doing all things. Yep. And that's it. That's it. It's an act of the will of the individual. <coughs> I want this. <coughs> Paul <coughs> sets the example. <coughs> In Philippians, the third chapter. Uh, 
uh, verses 8 to 10. Yea, doubtless, and I, <clears throat> and I count all things but loss <clears throat> for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ and be found in him. They want a relationship with him. He is their end all and be all. That's all they want is him. <clears throat> be found in him. Not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. That I might know him. <clears throat> the word know is to have an intimate relationship with him. That I might know him, the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings. They want him <clears throat> to the point where they're willing to suffer whatever it takes to remain with him, be in him, uh, 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 covet him. <clears throat> be made conformable unto his death. <clears throat> so this is the mind of the bride. And in eternity, <clears throat> the bride receives its desires. It sees made herself ready. And so she steps into this supreme position. But <clears throat> I hope that helps your question. So that means that not all born again Christians are part of the bride. By no means. Never knew it. By no means. Yeah. 